Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Vivaldi web browser. Now this is a partially open sourced web browser. The underlying Chromium engine is open sourced, however the UI that's on top of it is closed sourced. I'm going through the introduction of the browser, which actually is a very nice feature. So I have to say this browser does have some very nice features to it. The tracker and ad blocking, yes, that does exist here. It seems to be more of a domain name based type of blocking rather than any sort of behavioral type of blocking so it lacks any fingerprint protection that the likes of Brave has. You can change to different themes. Now this browser does remind me of Chrome in a way at this point because of the independent theming that's different to the underlying desktop. Although you can use the desktop theming and I'll come on to the rest of the settings in a moment. Now there's quite a lot of customization here and I'll I do have to say that is a little bit different. So the customization of where you want your tabs. Well, look, I've been using browsers for far too many years and they've always been at the top. So that's what I'm going to stick with. There's extra features that have been added to the browser, like a notepad. Lots of help guides in how to get things set up. A tab tiling. That seemed a very intriguing feature. Although when I was actually testing out the browser, I honestly didn't appreciate it particularly much I mean, maybe some people have a use for it but I didn't like it so much this is the default start page for Vivaldi there's a few links on here which are all kind of advert based which uh, end up getting blocked by my DNS server <laughs> oh well never mind there's even a game in the browser uh, should you wish to play a game instead of working I guess or whatever you're meant to be doing yeah, it's kind of a, a, a like a weird platformer game, but you sort of slip and slide all over the place. Yeah, let's try it out. Oh, let's go backwards here and over that. Yeah, um, collect some coins. I, I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing this. Anyway, let's get out of that. Let's start with one of these help guides and looking at the tabs. So if I right click on the tabs, we have the options of periodic reload. Nice, so that saves the use of an add-on. Hibernating tabs, stacking the tabs. Uh, yeah, that's a feature. And again, I didn't really see the use of this when I was testing it out the browser, but the feature is there should you want it. The default search engine is Bing. Uh, I suppose for the moment we can always Bing it, but you can change it later on in the settings for anything else. Let's look at the page tiling feature. So on the bottom right hand side, there's that little screen and you can select to tile. And this is the browser tiling. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a weird one to try and get used to. So we've got these two tabs are, are linked. And yeah, I could browse around, uh, do something in this tab on the left hand side. And then, yeah, on that tab there as well. I, that is nice, but honestly, I don't see anything wrong with doing that. <laughs> Continuing a look at the features on the bottom right hand side. So we've got a page capture, controlling the image animations. There's a CSS debugger that could be useful for web development, as well as using the inspect tool, which uh, that's very standard in Chrome and Chromium. Looking at this bar on the left hand side, so we have bookmarks. Yeah, that's normal. Download. Haven't downloaded anything yet on this session of the browser. My page history. A notepad. Yes, a notepad. This browser has a built in notepad to it. I could remind myself to have a beer and then have food. <laughs> or, or in reverse order, either way is good. Um, but if I don't want to keep that note anymore, well, I could get rid of it. Delete that. Yep. And then it's in the deleted notes. So that, uh, so that is an interesting feature to have, making notes while you're looking around at stuff on the internet. I can hide to that panel entirely and talk about hiding things. Control in the F11 gets rid of all the toolbars. That's slightly different to the F11, which would be full screen. So let's take a look at some of the settings on customize. The appearance, well, we can use the native desktop styling. 
uh, this setting requires a restart to take effect. Okay, well, it just means restarting the browser. Now I have the native application title bars. There's different themes. We can have a scheduled theme change going from light to dark, so that could be useful for nighttime browsing. It can help your eyes relax if you've got a darker theming. That's nice, although I have blue light reduction built in to my system. Yeah, all the various different options here. Very nice, very nice. Oh, quick commands, that's a little bit different. So quick commands is F2. There's some different commands we can issue. Let's say I want to look at the task manager. There you go. There's the task manager and the memory footprint. You can customize keyboard shortcuts and there is quite a lot of shortcuts here. Gestures, that's something I didn't try. Default search engine, it's got to be DuckDuckGo for me. Privacy, we've got the tracker on ad blocking, we've got the cookie blocking. Now I know this video is getting a bit long, but I did try out the cookie blocking. Although it's a little bit awkward to actually re-enable the cookies. Go on, let's try it quickly. So accept cookies and no and never. There we go, upon restarting the browser, I can see content has been blocked there in the address bar. And if I want to allow cookies for individual sites, then this is how I can do it. So yeah, allow cookies, and I think I have to refresh again. So it's not quite as seamless as I was finding in Brave, and to be honest, this was part of what pushed me towards using Brave over Valdi. It's the control of the whitelisting of cookies. In terms of installing new extensions, well, that can be done through the Chrome Web Store. Although it does say add to Chrome. Yep, okay, we'll add the extension. And yeah, then you have the option of removing from Chrome. <laughs> so it doesn't know it's Vivaldi. But there's the extension which I have just installed. Well, looking at the EFF Cover Your Tracks, well, this is with the tracking and ad blocking enabled. As we can see, unfortunately, it has not scored as well as Brave. Brave managed a yes on both tracking ads and invisible trackers. We only have partial protection here. So that means my system can be identified, while well, compared to the other EFF results, that is 1 in 147,000 computers. Although there is perhaps an argument of is it worth being unique or blending in with a crowd? I'm sure I did read somewhere that Vivaldi identifies as Chrome in user agent, although that's not entirely true. Yes, we have the Chrome version number as the first browser here, and then Safari, and then it does identify the Vivaldi browser. So it should be possible to identify Vivaldi browsers in terms of internet browser statistics. Now to discuss a couple of downsides, starting with privacy. There's actually a privacy policy with this browser. A privacy policy of all things. Oh dear, just the things I absolutely hate. Vivaldi assigns a unique ID to each profile, and then a connection is made via HTTPS to their servers located in Iceland every 24 hours containing the unique ID, CPU architecture, screen resolution, and time since last message. So yeah, they anonymize some of that detail, but they do collect this, and as far as I can see, there is no way of turning this off. I noticed that sort of feature also exists in Brave, but you can disable it. As far as I can tell in the settings, there is no such option. Now I could say, what about reviewing the source code? Unfortunately, you can't with Vivaldi. This is perhaps another downside in that it's only partially open source. So the open source element is the Chromium engine and the closed source element is the user interface, although part of it is open source. So they specify here that 92% yeah, of the browser's code is open source. That's coming from Chromium, and 3% is open source coming from Vivaldi, and 5% is user interface closed source. That could be a deal breaker for some people. In my mind, I would prefer to use the best software, be it open source or closed source, and that does mean I have closed source elements on my system, such as the NVIDIA graphics drivers. So there is a whole discussion about this, but there we are, that is the state of it. It's only a partially open source product. 
We can confirm some of these items that have been saved about the system looking in the local state file. Now the contents of this file does seem to change as time goes on because what you've looked at here is a brand new install. Whereas if I look back at an install which I was running for a longer period of time, what we have on the last line here is slightly next daily ping times, next monthly ping, next weekly ping, and a unique ID. So that is all stored in the config file. What I did notice about these timings is that number there doesn't make any sense as to what it is. That is not a timestamp. The timestamps are much shorter. In fact, do we have an example of one here? Uh, yes, we do. So there you are. There is a timestamp there that is epoch time, which, as you can see, is a lot shorter than that number down there. So the question is, what is that timestamp? I don't know. But there you are. So that was a look at Vivaldi Web Browser. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.